everybody. Just if we would just really step back and not force our body to do things that it does not want to do, we would learn so much. Hello, hello. We are live here on Facebook and we are here with our hormonal strategist, Dr. Camilla Dixon on New Ben Queen Talk Facebook Live. Three major reasons why we are sick. So I'm going to give you some details about her. I'm still going to read her bio to you just quick so you have a better understanding of who we have before us. Dr. Dixon is a naturopathic doctor certified integrated holistic health and healing coach board certified holistic health practitioner board certified alternative medical practitioner certified new, um, neutral no neutral neutral health professional nutritional health pro professional certified neutral nutritional health specialist master herbalist herbal formulator in health Specialist. She attended Trinity School of Natural Health, where she added, where she graduated as a naturopathic doctor. Studied under Dr. J. L. Johnson, Ph.D., LLC, Master Herbalist, before starting Allo Man Enterprise, Love Thyself Institute, and Camilla D's Natural Women. Over the last 27 years, she has studied American, Japanese, and Chinese herbology, providing counseling to thousands of women all of all age in the United States and many other countries where chronic disease such as high blood pressure, high sugar, AIDS, cancer, lupus, and fibro fibroid tumors, to mention a few. Her commitment is unwavering to empower God's women with knowledge so they can reclaim their health and live life to the fullest. In 2009, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor, fueling her passion and commitment to teaching women to the benefits of preserving their bodies from cutting and burning and poisoning their natural healing. For over 27 years, she has hosted a television radio show called Kingdom Restoration Health Corner and Health Talk that has helped to significantly enlighten the minds of individuals on how to improve their health. She is married to her wonderful husband, business partner, Mark Dixon, for 31 years with three children and 10 grandchildren. But to connect with Dr. Dixon, please call 1-888-245-3151. Or email drd at healbydesign.net. So there we have it before. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Dixon. <laughs> and every time I, I I get to that part of talking about her husband, yes. her, her, listen, her boyfriend, her <laughs> business partner, and every time I say her wonderful husband, listen, she gets a smile and cheese from ear to ear. I just, I don't know. You know, it's not that she got all these wonderful things in her bio that I'm reading off, but just the fact I'm talking about her wonderful husband, y'all. I see, I see them on Facebook and I see how they just love each other. They're going out to eat and stuff and just enjoying life like they just boyfriend and girlfriend. Like they just started dating. And they've been together for like over two decades and she's still smiling. Woo! <laughs> now that's love. Honey, that's when you got your stuff together, honey. And you can still enjoy life and cheese like yes. she <laughs> something, something is right. <laughs> and they look good. They look well together. So anyway, thank you. So we got her here, y'all, to talk about three major reasons why we're sick. And y'all, I am super excited to find out why we're sick. Now, last week, uh, we talked about um, we talked about a hormone. We talked about menopause and why women are, you know, in the condition that they're in, you know, and, and what are the different things that affect their bodies and things of that nature. Now she's back today to discuss with us why are we sick? Not just one reason why we're sick, but three major reasons why we're sick. And y'all, she's a, a natural herbalist, so y'all got to ask questions. So if y'all have any questions y'all want to ask, you know, the comments are great. But please ask questions. I can see your comments. So ask the questions. Share this video. We want as many women that can get on as possible to look at this live stream on tonight because we want to really make sure they're being educated on tonight. And then as we move, as we move further, she can, you know, they can connect with her to get more information. So Dr. Dixon. Yes. We want to talk about these three major reasons why we're sick. 
So I'm going to let you have it because I'm ready to be educated on tonight. I need to find my pen and paper so I can take some notes here. So okay. let us have it. All right. <laughs> so first up, you say welcome to all of our listening audience. And I just want to thank you for taking the time just to tune in. But also thank you for allowing me into this space. Um, listen, listen, there are so many things that are happening right mm-hmm. today that we're going through and a lot of times there are no answers and we try right. to figure it out on our own or we're sent down this rabbit hole of trying to figure it out for us right and it is unfortunate that mm-hmm. most of the time women african american women or women of color are not heard right, right. We, we say the same things over and over and we're still not heard. Mm. So I just want to give you just a piece of some things that you can begin to look at. And Mm -hmm. as we do that, prayerfully, it will enlighten you, right? So I want you to write down, hopefully you have your pencils and paper. I gave you some time to get that together. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So when we talk about why we're sick, mm-hmm. and I've been doing this now for the past 28 years, mm. and I've probably, if you name it, I've seen it or had mm-hmm. a conversation about it um, or studied it, however it comes. But as you look across the board, it has been the same. Mm-hmm. And these three major things, I want you to write down W, the letter W. Mm-hmm. The letter C like Charlie mm-hmm. and the letter D like David. Okay. Right? So we're going to break these down. Woo. And I want you to just kind of, as we go through it, take some time to think about yourself and some of the things that we're actually doing to our children. Right. Okay. If we're affected the okay. same way. Right. So the first okay. one is going to be waste. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. Right? Let's talk about it. So we have so much waste in our system mm-hmm. that it affects every part of your body. Mm-hmm. So, and we mentioned it before, if you are eating, even if you're just at a minimum eating two meals a day, right? Mm-hmm. You right. have 14 meals that are in your system in a week's time. Okay. If you are only having a bowel movement two to three times, where's the rest of that waste? Wow. So waste, when it is not uh, released out of the system, can then enter into the bloodstream. Mm. When you have waste that is now into the bloodstream, now you have this dirty, sticky blood that is now running through your system. Right. Um, And your blood travels through every part of your body. mm -hmm. It travels through the heart, through the lungs, through the brain. You just think about it. And as it's traveling, it's making deposits because there's so much waste that's Mm -hmm. in the system. So now you're affected by bloaty stomach. You're affected by backed up bowels. You're affected um, with holitosis you're affected it's it's so much that you are now affected with so and and i'm i'm a visual person right (laughs) so visual being visual makes a huge difference to me Mm -hmm. so if you take all that waste that is left over in the system right Mm -hmm. and then we create heat in the body by eating all these hot, spicy foods and all of these things that we're doing, we're creating heat in the system. So with that heat, now you have heat and waste that's being mixed together. Yeah, think about that. So all of this is what's happening in our system. So if you have waste, that then takes us to the letter C, which is circulation. So now this affects the way that our blood is, is circulating throughout the system, mm. which now can create pain in the body, can mm. create inflammation in the body, can create, um, even with women, it can now create issues 
in the uterine area because there is no circulation. Now you're having all these clots and all these things that are passing through because there's too much waste and poor circulation that's happening. So it affects every, again, every part of your body. Circulation, everything was designed to move. That's the way God created it, right? right. He said everything moves. Anything that is stagnated begins to die. So if circulation is not happening, now we can understand why a lot of people are having issues in the lower part of the body, why they're turning dark, why they're not getting the circulation, why we're having so many issues with diabetes, high blood pressure, um, even to our males that may be listening, they're having issues with circulation and that affects them as well. So it's so much that's connected to just those two that we talked about. So wait a minute. <laughs> See, I think that's why I was taking notes because I think we're writing this stuff down. So, so we're talking. You know, when you talked about, I just I just thought about you know having poop mm -hmm. and having it you know a closing area or anything that smells really bad and a closing compacted area or even garbage. Yes. You know, and and when it heats up and it gets hot. Yes. And it opens up, it has this yeah. smell to it. And so when you talk about halitosis, you know, bad breath and things like that, it just makes it think like it's not coming, you know, halitosis is not coming from bad teeth or whatever. And some of that stuff is coming from... Coming from the gut. Coming so from the bowels, up through, up through the... Yes, ma'am. So what... <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, so, so halitosis, so it's, it's more than just bad breath. It's like, oh my goodness, your breath is bad, but it's not just, you know, okay, so if I have a cavity, so, and I'm thinking, okay, you need to go brush your teeth. You know, I'm thinking, oh, you need to just, you know, mouthwash or something. No, it's, it's more than just yes. mouthwash. It's deeper, it's deeper than that. So you mean to tell me all that food that yes. did not come out through my, I did not release. Mm -hmm. It's now compact inside of my tummy area and my bowels, and now I'm hot and I'm sitting right here talking, and that hot, smelly breath is coming forth. It's because, okay. No. It, th that is definitely one of the possibilities that you have to look at. And, and it can get to the point where it actually comes through the pores. So it's coming wow. through the pores where you're, you're also now getting that that smell in the same way and so oh my goodness yeah so we have you know again you have to think about that if waste is not coming out the question is where is it going right and it's in the system it's not going anywhere so, so go ahead I, okay so when i so when people are uh, are sweating mm -hmm. and and or 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 not you know, maybe sweating, but they have a, such a, uh, they have an aroma or a smell or, or, or uh, so it's coming, it's probably coming from the food they have eaten and it's coming now out of their pores and their skin. So we're, we're smelling them, you know, you said it's what? Waste. <laughs> okay. So I they have many listen many times we never think about what is actually internal we're we're so focused on what's external that we don't think about what's happening to us internally right, right? and it again when we talk about things that that must move you have to move your bowels that is a must because it's not just going to go away it's it won't just disappear. It needs to, again, a, a detox is something that is so necessary, but you can't just detox the colon. You have to detox the entire body. That means your blood. That means all the organs in the body, Your, which includes the, the, the brain, the cells, your tissues. All of that needs to be detoxed. It's not just about doing the colon because all of this is circulating throughout the entire system when we think about even to the point of clots sometimes how they happen in the body 
When you think about cholesterol, your liver is your detoxing organ, right? However, your kidneys also detox. Um, the pancreas also has to detox. That's how you now start talking about high sugar. You start talking about um, blood pressure. You start talking about cholesterol. All three of those organs are connected to the three of those. And if we aren't detoxing them and allowing them to flow the way that they should, we're going to have issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so like you said, when it comes down to like we were talking about WCD, mm -hmm. we, are, we, talk, we talked about the waste. Yes. We talked about the C, which is circulation. Yes. And so when you're talking about having like, when I was talking about the stiffness and when you're getting up off the sofa, I've been sitting for like an hour and now your body's stiff. Or when you lay down and you're getting up and you're, you're, you're stiff, it's not just, it's just, it's more than just, oh, I had a hard day at work or, you know, whatever. And especially if you don't have a job, like how you still, you know, so they come from, <laughs> that come from poor circulation. And then, you know, you talked about the clots and, you know, inflammation. And you talked about uh, uh, how it, you know, with women it can affect our uterus when you don't have, you know, the, the circulation coming forth. So, I mean, it's just, it's, uh, I mean, I'm just in awe about how, you know, um, I'm just in awe about it. So we hadn't even got to the D because I stopped you because I was still trying to process everything, you know, you know, and, you know, when you are talking about the liver, the kidney, the pancreas, then, you know, I'm going to have to go back to that one because I'm be like, you know, tell us again, how can we detox this stuff? Because it's more than just taking, you know, a laxative, you know, to, you know, get that stuff out of your tummy. You know, now you say, okay, you've gotten that stuff out of your belly. Okay, now what? You know, you've gotten it out of your bowels. Now what? You know, so how you take it to the next level? How do you cleanse your blood? How do you cleanse, you know, your, your liver, your kidney? How do you clean all those other organs? So, you know, we got to go to that one. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop here. So we're going to talk about the, we talked about the waste of the circulation. You know, so I'm gonna see what else you have for us. Well, let's let's, let, let's stay there. Let, okay. Let's stay okay there because the D mm -hmm. is the D will kind of tie all of that together. Okay, gotcha. Right. Okay. So when you break down each one, so let's take a look at the pancreas and its job. The pancreas job is to help to process the sugar. And, and I'm gonna kind of lay it out as simple as I can without kind of getting all into names and all of that so okay. when you look at the pancreas its job is to take the sugar or things that we put in and then convert it into energy right that's that's his job mm -hmm. however we do overloads right we right. will get up in the morning and we're just the first thing in the morning we're doing is dumping sugar into our system mm -hmm. and then during break time we're dumping sugar into our system mm -hmm. lunch we're dumping so we're constantly dumping sugar into our system and now the, the pancreas is like listen i'm overloaded i don't know what to do with all of this sugar oh wow so then next to it the liver then says okay so allow me to the liver's job is to detox but its job is also to preserve some of that sugar to turn into energy as well mm -hmm. so when you overload the pancreas you then overload the, the liver and now you have all of that being dumped back into the bloodstream. And now the kidneys have to take over in order to help process, which they are filters. Your kidneys are filters, <laughs> right? So they do all of the detoxing through the system, get rid of all the waste, and then kind of filters and flush the blood, blood back through the system. Same thing they would do on dialysis is they pull the blood out, wash it in quotation marks and put it back in. That's what happens. So that's the kidney's job. So then the kidneys are completely overloaded because we're putting in all of this. We're putting in acid, we're putting in sugar, we're putting in all of these things that can cause those filters to erode or to not filter correctly or become clogged and they can no longer function. So there are many of us that are, and, and we're not gonna go down that road, but there are so many of us now that are dealing with these kidney issues so many of us are dealing with high blood. So many of us are dealing with um, with diabetes, and all three of those organs are affected. Mm -hmm. So, again, the pancreas sends it to the liver. The liver then filters it to the kidneys, and now we have a breakdown in the system. Right? Wow. So, you have to, again, take this entire, that's why I say every organ in the body 
has to be detoxed. Right. And then to go just a little bit further, and then we're going to kind of back up, is that when the kidneys become overloaded, the yeah. heart tries to take over. Oh, goodness. When the heart tries to take over and it's too much for it, then the lungs try to take over. So now in that full cycle, we now have, can come back down to congested heart. We can come down to lung issues. We can, it's so much because there's so much waste and waste is not just um, in the bowels. You can have waste that's mucus. You can have mucus waste mm -hmm. because we're doing too much dairy, too much flour, too much mm -hmm. all of these. So now you have other kinds of waste and that where the poor circulation, which affects when you try to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. and stiff. So think about it. Paste comes from flour and water, right? If you mix those two together, it becomes pasty. So in that paste, that's what's getting in these joints. That's what's flowing through the blood. So now when I try to get up in the morning, I'm having issues, right? Because of poor circulation. So that's kind of how all that ties in together. You good? Good. I don't drop the mic. <laughs> so, okay. Like all of these organs are trying to play their part. Yes. And they're trying, and every organ is trying to help out this organ. So when this organ say, okay, this I'm overloaded, then this organ say, hey, I, I got you, but I'm gonna try to see what I can do. And then this organ, and it's just like it just trickles. And then now, you know, now we're at that. At the D. So what is the D? What did we said the D was? D is basically deficiency. Wow. So we're lacking a lot of the minerals. Every organ needs a mineral. Wow. Every organ needs a mineral. And most of us are not doing minerals. We're doing vitamins. Which wow. Is good. Okay. And we never think about the minerals that are that are needed in order to help us to function. Right. So whenever we we think about deficiency in that effect, is the question is how am I losing it so much? Well, some of them don't stay in the system very long, and most of them come out every time you urinate. So a lot of us are urinating five, six, seven, eight times a day. We're constantly running to the bathroom. So right. again, every time you urinate, you're losing those minerals and then you're never replacing them so you're eventually going to be deficient right wow right and then now that can then create these charlie horses that we have in the middle of the night that can cause the the fingers to cramp up that can cause the heart to feel like it's racing so like you're literally having an anxiety attack it can feel wow. that way when the heart is racing um it can just affect so many different organs in the body and, and how they actually um, would respond, even under stress, or if there is a dis-ease that happens in the body. The body is not equipped to fight because not just the immune system, but the organs don't have what they need in order to help you to fight whatever is happening. So again, we lose it by this frequency of urination, which by the way, you're not supposed to be urinating that many times a day. And yes. so the way that I like to always just kind of help to give an explanation as to why we say that is because you're constantly doing fluid, 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 right? And you're losing. So you're losing a lot of potassium. When potassium goes out, the blood pressure goes up. So if the blood pressure is up and you're constantly having this urination, they put you on a pill, right? Which is designed to pull water. So then my question is, how did the water get there? You put it there, right? So if I stop, then it helps my body to not urinate so frequent, which then helps me to hold on to my potassium, which then helps me to regulate my blood pressure. So... Everything again is a cycle and we have to really figure out how to work the, the cycle of the body. Okay, so okay. So we so we know that some of this stuff like 
I'm you know I'm big on the sweets. That's the reason why I keep going back to the sweets. Mm-hmm. Because the sweets have been like a, a issue of mine. I heard this this lady had said she said that when you get up in the morning, mm-hmm. what you eat when you first get up in the morning, how you start off. That's probably how you're gonna end because if you wake up like me, if I wake up with sweets, eat me some sweet cereal or eat me some pancakes and syrup, you know, and you know, I'm just, you know, want some sweets. I'm gonna want sweets for the rest of the day. But not only that, I'm gonna feel really tired. I'm gonna feel sluggish, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm gonna think that okay, my body's gonna say, hey, you need more sweets because I'm gonna feel like I need that energy. So then I'm gonna pop a pop of energy drink, then you know, I'm gonna want more sweets, I'm gonna have more cravings for it. So if however you start your morning will eventually possibly be what you do for the rest of the day because your body is not craving that and you're wondering why you're so tired, wondering why you're feeling like really sluggish and you wanna drink some coffee. Because you say, okay, that's gonna work, but then you get that coffee, you want that good, sweet, good kind of coffee. You don't want that coffee that's gonna sting and it tastes all bad. You want some of that, all that good stuff in your coffee that tastes tastes real good, and that's gonna make matters even worse. <laughs> you be like, honey, child, girl, you just. But I'm just saying, we're just thinking that you know, because we don't want to drink that, you know, that other stuff. So now we got the we got that issue. So when we talk about the minerals, and you were talking, you were talking about the potassium. What are some other type of minerals that we can put in our body? Because I, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, let me let me talk to you about the weight, about the urination. I mm-hmm. thought you had to use the bathroom so many times a day. How many times a day sh- should we be using the restroom? Like three? Three. Yes, ma'am. Three times a day. Three times a day. Yes, <laughs> and and this it, it goes deeper. So this, I'm gonna go there. So when you talk to anyone who has uh, kidney issues, Mm -hmm. right? They would typically at some point tell you to only do 32 ounces of fluid. That would be the max in which they can put into the system, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, the question has always been, why wait until I get to that point? Right. To tell me how much I should be um, drinking in order to help to preserve and to allow my kidneys to rest and not overwork them as opposed to doing it on the back end. So I always look at the back end of things and then kind of work my way back. And and that has been that has worked for years in how we've seen it. Your body if the kidneys are not able to get rid of that fluid, you swell. Right. Because gravity is sending everything down. So now you're swelling in the lower part of the body and then things begin to move up, right? So now it's deposited in the stomach, it's deposited in the thighs, it's deposited under the arms, it's deposited under the neck, it's deposited around the heart. Fluid is gonna go wherever it can go, right? So. You have to then begin to look at these things. And most of the time when you talk about too much fluid, you get the the swelling that happens in the body or the hands start feeling like they're falling asleep, tingling. Those kind of things start happening in the hands and the feet. So it's, again, a cycle that happens. And once you correct the cycle, the body is, it responds the way that it was designed to. So besides bananas, what other kind of minerals can we put in that we may be able to put in our body? Kiwi Mm -hmm. is very good. Um, Pineapple is good. Um, There are so many you can do. Greens are good as well to put into the system. Um, Sometimes if someone is um, extremely deficient, Mm -hmm. we do move to doing a supplement in order to help to bring the body up to where it should be. And then while doing that, kind of giving the right foods in order to fit into the system and those kind of things. So it's not just potassium. You have potassium, magnesium, um, your zinc, your calcium, all of those minerals are essential to every part of your body. Wow. Okay. Okay. This has been good. 
this has been this has been a a, a, a blessing. I, I hope and pray that everybody who was listening in on tonight, I was waiting for some comments to come through to see if anybody had any questions or they had any comments. I think you you, you pretty much answered a lot of the questions that they probably was looking for. Oh, I have a question. What, what is there some kind of water we should drink? Because I like bottled water, right? So is there a particular kind of water that I should be getting? Like, is it spring water? I mean, the signing, I don't know. People be talking about the water. Like, you should be drinking this kind of water. Is it tap water, well water? I don't know. What kind of water is it that we can drink? <laughs> is there a particular kind of water that we can um, drink? So spring water is good. The still water is good at a certain time alkaline water i'm not opposed to but i again this is how what i believe is that there should be a balance between the alkaline and the regular water simply because you don't want to take your body to a complete state of alkaline you need some form of acidity in order to digest your foods in order to um, just kind of help your system to break down certain things, you need acid. So you don't want to go completely alkaline. Right. Okay. Okay. So we need to, we need to back up from the sweets. We don't need to, you know, add all that other stuff like thick stuff like okay meats. Okay, let's let's talk about the meat. Um, <laughs> So like steak, hamburgers. <laughs> Are you like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, ribs, you know. Um. Did you say ribs? So, okay, listen, and, and because we're true to, mm -hmm. to where we are, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody is going to go vegan not everybody's going to be a vegetarian not everybody's going to be you know a pescatarian we're just not going to all do that and i just like to be honest about it right however we can make choices that would be um a better choice and that's doing grass-fed that's doing um your free range that's doing those kinds of meats um but as much as you can take some time to actually do a detox where you pull away from it okay. and allow your digestive system to really begin to get a break where it's not working so hard all the time right so when i'm sitting here saying i can't use the bathroom and i'm constipated had used the restroom and okay let's talk about that one okay so i've heard somebody say when every time you eat you should be going to the restroom you should be going to the bathroom you should be you know mm -hmm. the number two is that true i mean is that true to that that's not realistic for most people okay right if you're having a really good bowel movement and listen some people say well i go to the bathroom every day uh -huh. You can go to the bathroom, but if you can sit down in the bathroom and read a magazine, you're constipated. <laughs> you're constipated. So your bowel should be flowing freely. Freely. It, it okay. should be free bowel movement that you're having and not being able to, to read. Okay, so how many times a day would be not, would be normal for us to go to the restroom? Should we go like two times a day? day three what well, you say we go pee you know you know that should be three times a day so maybe three times a day to do number two or again it's not real and as long as i've been doing it it has some people do mm -hmm. right but the majority do not okay so at least like i said one good bowel movement and that's okay. if okay the bowels are flowing freely then i i can kind of work with that okay okay two times a day would be ideal yes okay twice okay so ideal twice a day but if it's once a day it's good mm -hmm. so going like a whole week it's like okay we got a problem we have a problem okay we have a problem so you should not have to go a whole week and then you say honey i gotta take me a laxative or something like mm -hmm. that and okay so i i did mention ribs and you said did you just say ribs so <laughs> what was the <laughs> if i did say ribs you said you just say ribs so I want to go back to that. What did that, what did, you know, what happened? What was going on? <laughs> I said, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, again, we're being realistic, right? And, and 
there are other choices that we can make. And if you really look at statistically in how ribs affect the body, oh. Um, <laughs> Were you asking for a friend? <laughs> Tell me. Because I, I know, uh, and I know we try to, we have to stay away from real. We have to stay away from pork. Um, I have somebody just say it's not good. So stay away from ribs. Stay away from pork. Stay away from a lot of burgers. So we should be eating, depending on how, I know you were talking about the chicken. So if chicken is good. No. So, okay. So are we talking, we, we want to go down a healthy meal or we want to go down how most people are still going to eat regardless of what I say. <laughs> but I mean, but at least at least if you tell us the truth, then we know, okay, next time we'll get ready to eat some ribs and some pork chop and burgers, you know, they kind of give us like, okay, now this is what you put inside of your body. You expect this stuff to be digested because can it really truly be digested? You know, like, you know, I had somebody say, leave it alone, leave the, leave the ribs and leave the, <laughs> the pork and all this stuff, leave it alone. But I'm just saying, I mean, because I know that I've been told it's kind of hard to digest that food, yes. you know? Um, and we're wondering why we have the high blood pressure because I tell people say, you know, if I need iron, if I say I'm cold, my feet are cold, you know, or whatever. They say, oh, you, you um, what is that? What is it called? Anemic. Um, anemic. Mm -hmm. And so, and so here is I'm trying to take iron pills, which we I've been told iron pills, you know, um, constipate you, you know. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, you know, because I don't eat healthy, you know. So um, that's my thing. So that's why I'm, that's why I got you here tonight to share, you know, to help us out. So, so we got so we have all of those things going on. So is it is it really um, that I'm anemic that I need iron when I'm when I'm when I'm cold and I got to you know eat red meat. Because I've been told, eat some liver. Eat, like, I think it was a chicken. Eat liver. It's something red. I mean, so, so now I just told you what liver does, right? And then we're going to turn around and eat somebody else's liver? <laughs> that just doesn't eat work well for me. That does not work well for me. So, here, you, listen, you can build up your blood. And, and when we talk about being anemic, and, and uh, there's a lot of us women that are anemic, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about that, you have to think, one, where am I losing the blood? Okay. That's going to be the first question. So if we're having heavy cycles, then I can understand where that's coming from, right? Mm -hmm. So you do a lot of green leafy vegetables. Okay. You do a B complex, again, mm -hmm. The right one do a b complex and then you do some wheatgrass in doing that you are building your blood but then mm -hmm. you have to come back and fix why is the cycle so heavy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. foods that we eat mm -hmm, can cause the cycle to be extremely heavy wow and also when you're anemic it causes your cycle to bleed longer so you have to create a balance. Yes, ma'am. Because it, the, the, there's no blood. So the, the blood doesn't know, okay, I need to stop at this point. So we have to, one, figure out what's happening with the cycle. And then two, start putting in these things in order to help to get the, the cycle and the blood back in order. Oh, wow. So what if they what if they can't tell you where you're, you, where you're losing the blood? What if they can't tell you where you're losing it? Like... If you, what if you don't have a cycle or or if your cycle hasn't even come on yet, you know, do you know if there's a place where you could be possibly losing the blood? Is it even possible? Like, oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. I've I've had I've had many clients who have been in that situation and then that's where we do a full consult with that. Okay. Yeah. So that we can just kind of go through some things we need to go through. Okay. Yeah, because so you can bleed anywhere in the body and and they won't pick it up. You can bleed in the lining of the stomach. They won't pick it up. You can be bleeding and it because it doesn't come out, right? Unless it's coming through the bowels and then you know because the bowels have turned extremely dark. But there are many people walking around today that are bleeding through the urine and don't know it. They don't know that there's blood in the urine because you can't physically see it a lot of times. Yeah. Right. 
So God Almighty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that that answers the question. Mm-hmm. We, so the, the bottom line is eat better. Yes. Take, new, um, take your minerals. You know, and if you don't do your minerals, make sure that you're getting your leafy food, your green foods. You know, your pineapples and. You know, we yeah, we have to get to we have to get with our special we have to get with you, our special specialist herbalist, Doctor Camilla. Yes. That's why you have that's why it's good to have someone who deals with holistic health and natural foods because those things that I hear for us, you know, to take so they can make our bodies healthy, we can look better, feel better, move around better, we won't have those aches, the swelling, you know, things like that. And and you know, and all the extra water, weight, yes. you know. So, um, yeah. And how much water should we take? I mean, how many is, is it? 30, 32 ounces. No, 32 ounces. That's it. So, so it's only four, eight ounce. Yes. Day. And, and the way that you do it is at each time that you're drinking, you only do four ounces of water. And I, I would challenge everybody just... If we would just really step back and not force our body to do things that it does not want to do, we would learn so much. A lot of times we're doing things because this is the way we have been taught, right? This is what we have heard, right? So I that's one of the major things. It's key to listen to your body. Your body will tell you, I need to lay down, I need to rest. I don't want that much. And we keep forcing water or whatever we're drinking. I had somebody to say here, but a bottle of water is 16.9 ounces. Yes. 16.9. So two bottles of water. (laughs) Yes. And, And remember I said, so that would allow you to do that because you're only drinking four ounces at one time. That's it. And most of the time again because the bottle is so big we just figure we need to finish it right yeah so i always tell my clients drink smaller buy smaller bottles and that changes your whole mindset right from the beginning and you actually can get two servings out of that one small bottle wow so if you break it up four ounces each time then you're allowed you're you're drinking fluid throughout the day so you're not dehydrated because you're still drinking fluid throughout the day. Yes. Okay, I'm done. Because <laughs> uh, I, I was always told. So I I know this has um helped us out so much. Um, Pastor Cassandra said thank you. Pastor mm-hmm. Rice said thank you because we were just thinking about all this water. We're thinking that we have to go to the restroom, you know, five six times a day. We have to urinate, you know, five six times a day. Now you're telling us, oh, you only need to go three times a day. Yes. That's the healthy part. You're losing all this water. Wonder why you're dehydrated. You know, you're tired and all this stuff, and you're losing your minerals that you need for your body. And you wonder why you're cramping, especially if you work out there in the heat. Yes. You know, things like that. Are you are you working out? So okay, so that's another thing. So when you're working out, and you're sweating. Mm-hmm. Do we drink more water to put? So we think, go, I want you to finish that sentence. To put okay. it. <laughs> okay. So is the sweat, I mean, because when we're sweating, right? We're sweating. Is that water or, I mean, is and we're losing it. So should we be putting it back in? Like if. So here, here's how we think about this. So sweating okay. is basically your body's way of urinating. It, you're urinating okay. through the skin, right? Because if you taste it, smell it, 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 it's a different smell. So what you're actually losing is minerals, not necessarily water. Because they will tell you to drink Gatorade to put it back in, which is the electrolytes that they put back into the system. So you're losing those minerals and not necessarily just water. Now, you do need to water to replenish. Again, that could be part of that four ounces that we talked about afterwards right but to walk around with a full gallon of water to drink that throughout it's just really something that we need to just really think about because again the kidneys still have to filter that you're not sweating all of that fluid out it still has to be processed through the kidneys which is putting extra work 
on the kidneys and you think even <laughs> so every organ needs to rest right I, that's that's biblical that's principle everything needs to take a rest but if you're constantly going to the bathroom how are your kidneys ever resting how are they ever taking time to replenish their cells or to go through their healing process if you're constantly working them if I worked you that way, do you think you would be able to keep up with it? No. Absolutely not. So why do we abuse it? That's what we're doing. Yeah. My God. Okay. Okay. I know we're gonna need some more help with some more stuff. So I you know someone's trying to call you back or but we I know we're gonna try we we gotta do something. Maybe since you know we gotta do some clubhouse or something, but this has been a real blessing. And I just wouldn't want to tell you thank you for you know coming on this Facebook live with us and and discussing, you know, three major reasons why we're sick. Yes. And this has been very informative. I you know, these women are are elated. They're happy because you shared this information with them and they haven't asked any more questions. I was waiting to see if any more questions have come through. I think I've asked the questions that they probably was wondering. So if anything, anything else you would like to share with us before we go out for today? No, if if we are okay or you're okay, then we can um, post in any of the comments in the website where they can go to reach me, um, just to reach out and do consults. Um, with all of my clients and when I tell you this what I just shared it's just a little bit of information right yeah so our conversations when we consult are much deeper um, so yeah we would do that and we talked about the detoxing part and I'm offering a 10 day um, uh -huh. gut detox so yeah I, I enjoyed my time giving that information um and just serving, just so that we're clear about what's happening with our bodies. Okay, so let's go back to this 10-day gut detox. Okay. So now y'all know you do your consultations. How do we get in? How do we get in contact with you? You know, so that we can start with our consultation mm -hmm. and then you know start with the gut detox. I mean, the 10-day gut detox. Like, how when you going to start this thing up? I mean, how do we find out more about this so we can get in on this thing? Because I need some. I need it. Okay, so the website, if you go to the website, there are links that will talk about um, okay. the 10-day challenge. And the website is Love Thyself Institute dot info. Okay. Love thyself institute dot info. Yes. Okay, good. So now that we know how we can get in touch with you so that we can start our consultation and then we can start our 10 day gut detox. I need that. I'm going to be, I'm going to reach out to you so that I can show them. I wish I could show them what I look like now. So when they see that gut be down, I be looking at all the and stuff. And I come back and I'm like, y'all see my makeup on. This is me without my makeup. <laughs> and look how pretty my skin is and stuff like yes. that. So I, 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 we, we have thoroughly enjoyed you on tonight. This has been great information. And I want to tell you, thank you so much for saying yes. And thank you for your time on tonight. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all the information and answering the questions. Thank you just for just being so informative like you have so much information to provide for us and i appreciate you and everything i love you you take care of yourself and god bless you Share, subscribe, and press the bell button.